Hello, in this presentation I will talk about different robot manipulator types used in many industrial applications. The aims of the presentation are to know different types of robots used in industrial applications as well as to understand the differences between these robots and also some concepts such as the open and closed schematic chains. Also, for instance, uh, to, difference, uh, to know the difference between serial and a parallel structure. And finally, we will focus on describing the main characteristics of this robot or each of these robot types. A robot manipulator is a mechanical structure made up of links in joints with an end effector link that can be controlled. Robot manipulators have a tool for or used for a wide spectrum of manipulation operations. The maximum number of degrees of freedom uh, for the end effector is 6, corresponding to the x, y, z positions and for the three orientations. But some robots have some redundancy, which implies that they can accomplish the same task in multiple ways. The main advantage that a robot offers compared to traditional automated manufacturing processes using, let's say, specialized machines is that robots are flexible they can be adapted to many situations. For this reason, they can be used to solve many industrial problems. There are two types of kinematic structures, so-called open or closed kinematic chain. An open or serial kinematic chain, due to its topological configuration, is nothing more than the union of links and joints in series. On the other hand, they are robots with close or parallel kinematic change due to their topological configuration. In order to differentiate between a serial or a parallel robot, we will have to study the degree of connectivity for each of the links, excluding in this case the base. If a link has a degree of connectivity of 3 or higher, then we will say that this is a parallel robot while if the maximum degree of connectivity is 2, then we will say that this is a serial robot. We will see in the next slide what's actually a degree of connectivity and how to compute it. But for now, uh, I would like first to mention some of the advantages that parallel robots have compared to zero robots. They generally allow a better distribution of the robot's load and tend to reach higher speeds and accelerations and they have uh, greater rigidity and accuracy, although we can say that their main advantage is that their kinematics is usually more complex and the workspace, this is a very important aspect, is usually uh, smaller than the ones in serial robots and also it's harder to compute. As I mentioned before, the degree of connectivity of a link defines the robot structure type. This degree can be computed from the number of links to which it is connected through a joint. In the figures we can see uh, the cases of two robots. One with an open uh, or serial uh, structure and the other one with a closed or parallel structure. In the case of a serial open chain, all links have a degree of connecti connectivity of 2, except the base and the end effector with a degree of 1, because they are only connected to another link. In the case of the parallel robot, the base has a connectivity of 3, although this should not be taken into account to be considered as a parallel robot, remember. The, re the rest of links, or remainder of links, they have uh, different degrees of connectivity, 2 or 3 or even 6 for the end effector. So now let's understand different types of robots. So let's start with the anthropomorph anthropomorphic robot or simply called robot arm. Or this is a classic robot structure with an open uh, serial kinematic chain structure. Uh, they are uh, one of the mostly used in industrial applications and their structure resembles uh, the human arm. Uh, as you can see. Uh, it has a waist, a shoulder and an elbow and this is accomplished with the three first joints of the robot that can be used to control the position of a wrist. 
and then with the joints that we have at the wrist then we can control the orientation of the tool like we have with our in this case hand finger the scanner robot which stands for selective compliance assembly robot arm is a robot used in industrial applications for basically for component insertion and assembly uh, this is an open kinematic chain robot arm and has four degrees of freedom uh, with two parallel revolute joints parallel means uh, uh, their axes are parallel that allow to control x y position and then it has a prismatic joint for controlling the set uh, position and a final revolute joint to control the orientation of the end effector the Cartesian robot is a robot formed by three prismatic joints in this case also in an open kinematic chain structure although in some cases there are some supporting rails but they do not affect kinematically to the robot uh, Cartesian robots can control up to three or a maximum of three degrees of freedom affecting only to the position of the end effector we can't control with this robot the orientation of the end effector the main advantage of this robot is that the inverse kinematics is just simply straightforward and uh, a common example uh, in our daily life of this uh, type of robots we can say for instance uh, we can find it in 3D printers some uh, additional but in this case obsolete uh, robots uh, that use open kinematic change structures are let's say the cylindrical and the spherical or polar, uh, sorry, polar robot this type of robot combines revolute and prismatic joints as you can see from uh, the letters below and also in this case in the animation on the right the parallel robot has by definition a closed kinematic chain one of the main advantage of this robot is that the position errors are average and they do not accumulate as is the case of serial manipulators when we talk about parallel robots we can distinguish between two types of robots the st steward platform type robots or delta robots for the first case uh, this robot has three sorry six uh, prismatic actuators that are used to move the end effector joints or they, they have that include joints that are spherical joints and um, and they can be frequently uh, found in driving or flight simulators for instance on the other hand we have delta robots that they use three revolute joints to move uh, three parallelogram arm structures attached to the end effector using uh, spherical joints the parallelogram robot arm structure is a closed kinematic chain robot it has three revolute joints while the rest of joints are all passive revolute joints the first two joints are just like as the ones we can find in any anthropomorphic arm in the animation anyway uh, this robot you, you can see here does not have or that does not include the first joint in which we can uh, turn the wrist of the robot arm but i believe that it's easy to imagine how it works um, well uh, anyway the third joint of this robot is controlled by a four bar mechanism or uh, linkage and the end effector uh, it's usually uh, affected or uh, controlled with a program structure that ensures that it's always horizontal in this case as you can see here in the animation the dual parallel scalar robot is an improvement of the scalar robot that allows avoiding some kinematic singularities its kinematics is a closed serial change and uses in this case a far bar linkage mechanism it has two revolute joints for the x y control and also a prismatic joint for the z control classic uh, robot arms can be a redundant robot this redundancy occurs when the robot has more degrees of freedom than the ones that we need to execute a specific task however we will usually refer to redundancy to robots with seven or more degrees of freedom this type of robot will allow us to solve tasks up to six degrees of freedom but because we have this redundancy 
we can see that or we can say that the robot is more dexterous because there, actually the main advantage is that uh, we can achieve multiple configurations or actually infinite configurations uh, to uh, reach the same position and orientation uh, and that's why we, we say that these robots uh, are more dexterous. Also this can be used to avoid for instance some singularities or let's say to avoid some joint constraints because of the extra degrees of freedom. And while to finish this presentation I would also would like to mention collaborative robots. These are robots as a classic or they are very similar to classic robot arms but they include force or, and torque sensors and also some harmonic drives and coders that will allow the detection of external forces on each of the joints and this means that these kind of robots can be compliant that is that they can yield in their effort to accomplish a specific task if we, uh, or the, if we, if we allow that and this uh, for instance uh, can be used to interact with humans safely the impedance for each of the uh, directions of this robot or the end effect or whatever uh, can be controlled and selected uh, to be let's say very stiff in some directions but very compliant in other directions. One of the main advantages offered by these type of robots is they can uh, use to let's say to learn tasks from human demonstrations for instance. Well in this presentation I have explained several type of robot manipulators used in industrial applications and we have analyzed some of the main, their main characteristics. Thank you very much.